All right, three, three X pitching grips. Next pitch we're going to talk about is the cutter. Um, obviously, Mariano Vera made this pitch, one of the most famous pitches ever. Um, cutter is really pretty simple. Um, the idea behind it is simple. The execution of it is a little bit more difficult. Um, actually, one of the hardest parts about a cutter is keeping your other pitches true. So a lot of guys that throw cutters um, normally throw four-seam fastballs or, or sinkers. The idea, though, um, a lot of guys that throw four-seam fastballs and cutters, their four-seam fastball starts becoming a cutter, or a cutter and a slider, your slider and your cutter start be meshing and becoming one. Both grips kind of become the same thing. Um, so the key with a cutter, um, simple grip, keep all your pitches separate if you can. Really try not to let your other pitches become uh, a cutter, your cutter become other pitches. Um, pretty simple grip. Try to find wherever you throw your four-seam fastball. Again, like we talked about in the first video, I throw my four-seam fastball right here. Uh, some guys throw it right here, you know, kind of move that thumb underneath. Or if you throw your four-seam fastball right there, um, that's perfectly fine, perfectly, no, no real difference. Um, if you throw your four-seam, basically grab your four-seam fastball and then turn the ball just a little bit. So it's off-center a little bit, if you can tell. Um, so normally I want it right here, and then if you just turn the ball a little bit, um, kind of um, counterclockwise in your hand, so it ends up off-centering the ball. That's the idea, that's it. That's exactly how you grip it. And so the idea now is throw it just like a forcing fastball. Stay right behind the ball, let this offset grip do the work. If you're offset a little bit, or if you're straight behind it, just like a forcing fastball, the ball's gonna come straight, straight out. If you're offset just a little bit and you throw it with the same thing, now the ball's, instead of pushing right behind, is pushing to the side and giving you a nice little spin this way. And that's exactly the cutter, exactly what you want out of the cutter. So think four seam fastball, wherever you throw your fastball, even if throw a fastball right, two seam fastball, you can just cut, just move the ball a little bit, counterclockwise the ball in your hand. Um, a little bit, or sorry, clock, yeah, counterclockwise the ball in your hand a little bit. If you're a lefty, um, obviously clockwise, you know, put the, the ball a little bit clockwise in your hand a little bit, off center just a little bit. Um, you want, only want to do it a little bit because the key is you got to stay on top of the ball. This is a pitch you cannot get to the side and let this become a slider. You can't let it spin too much. You need to make it look like a fastball. This pitch also has to be just like your fastball. If your fastball is 90 miles an hour, it's not, you know, it's not crazy if you keep the ball at 89 miles an hour. Um, but most of the guys, you generally, generally a cutter, you're about three miles an hour off, uh, maybe four miles an hour. If you start getting, if you're throwing fastball at 90 miles an hour and you start getting down to 85, 84, now it's becoming a little bit more of a slider than a true cutter. A true cutter, man, is just is going to be dead straight and at the very last second move just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, just like with the two-seamer, big key on the, the cutter is ask the catcher. Find out from the catcher what the ball is doing. Don't trust your eyes. If you see the ball moving, it's moving too much. If your catcher says, hey man, that, 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 that's moving a lot, it's, it's a slider. Uh, it's a fine pitch, but now understand what the difference is. A slider is more of a swing and miss pitch. A cutter is more of a swing and, and hold your hands as you're walking back to the dugout and ground ball to second base pitch. Um, so you want a really late pitch, hard pitch, that's just a late little movement in on, on the hands to the lefty from a right-handed pitcher, um, or off the plate to a right-handed hitter that comes back onto the plate. Um, you don't really want to throw it to a right-hand right hitter um, from a right-hand pitcher because now that's kind of a flat pitch that goes away. If you're going to throw it to a right-handed hitter, throw it in on their hands. Again, kind of same thing to a left-handed hitter from a right-handed pitcher. You don't want to throw it over the plate because that pitch stays flat. You want to throw it in off the plate so it's on their hands. Um, you want to make this as basically as difficult to hit as possible. Make it look like a forcing fastball, just a nice easy forcing fastball on the inside corner, and then bam, it darts in on their hands and you break their bat. Um, to place pressure, just like we talked about, um, you want to hold it just like a forcing fastball, just offset it a little bit. Um, you're going to hold it just like a four-seamer, nice and soft, not too hard, not too soft. Um, just hold it. Just make sure the ball can't really come out. Um, 
one of the things you can do when you when you want to throw the ball, um, you can you can think a little bit instead of just forcing like this. Try that first. Try the offsetting it first. Now, if you're not getting anything out of it, instead of just straight forcing, think just a little to the side. Think a one, a one to seven. Um, you know, maybe even like a twelve thirty to six thirty idea. Basically, just right there instead of the twelve to six right there and stay on top of the ball the big key too on this one is stay over the ball so you don't you don't want to get too behind it because you get too behind it, it's just going to spin a lot and, and basically just hang out right over the plate for somebody to hit it if you're on top of it you're more likely to get a good hard break um why throw it the idea is obviously to jam guys get bait you know to just jam them uh great time is when guys are on base um you know get a nice easy ground ball uh, if you're throwing a lot of pitches away to like a left-handed hitter or right-handed hitter, you're throwing them away, or you know, or a great great time to throw to a right-handed hitter from right-handed pitcher is if you're throwing uh, forcing fastballs just in off the plate a little bit to them, and then you can throw at the same spot and it cuts back over the plate for a strike. Or left-handed hitters, you're throwing fastballs away to a left-handed hitter, and so they start reaching out over the plate, and then all of a sudden that ball comes cuts right in on them, and when they're already reaching over the plate. That's where you get a lot of those jam shots, a lot of those broken bats. Um, it's, uh, it's not a hard pitch to throw. It's, it is a hard pitch, though, to get right. Um, a lot of times, a lot of people's cutters become sliders. They just, you get to the side, you start going too big around it, and it starts getting a lot of movement. When I threw my cutter, um, I essentially just called it a slider. I, I, I threw it with this cutter grip, same cutter grip that other guys threw true natural cutters, but my ball moved so much, it was just a slider. Um, it was hard, but it was a, it had definitely a slider movement. Um, so the perfect complement for that pitch is a good forcing fastball or a sinker. If you want to throw a sinker down away to someone, you throw a cutter the other side. Um, just like a sinker, you just have to just, now the hitter has to decide which way the ball is going to move. It looks like the same pitch out of your hand, same location. Now they have to decide which way it's going to move. Um, or a four seamer, so you can barrel uh, barrel up the um, the plate, throw a lot of strikes straight, and then at the last second, now you're throwing something that looks like the same pitch off the same grip, and then it's just moving just a little bit. It's hard for hitters. You want pitches to look the same to hitters. You want pit the hitter to have to eliminate something. So um, a lot of times you want the hitter to eliminate the sides of the plate. So if he has to worry about whether that ball is inside or outside, he generally sees out of your hand whether that ball is inside or outside. So if you have a ball that's a slider, you can't start it on the same same plane as a four-seam fastball because they're going to do different things. So now all of a sudden, halfway through, he's seeing one pitch is going this way, one pitch goes that way. He can decide whether one pitch is a slider or one pitch is a fastball. Um, with a cutter, the idea is that balls move so late that it looks like a four-seam fastball, then all of a sudden, really late, one goes, one goes up, one goes to the side. Um, or same thing with a sinker. The same, same path, and all of a sudden, one goes that way, one goes the other way. Very hard for a hitter to decide which one's which. So a really good sinker and a really good cutter, hitters have a tough, tough time facing pitches like that. Even though one, the pitchers are probably going to be around the same speed, they can gear up for the same velocity, but if one ball is moving out, one ball is moving in, and they, and they don't know until late which one it is, that's going to be a really good time for you as a pitcher. Arm angle for a cutter. Um, arm angle, if you're throwing from the side, that's not really going to work. Um, three quarters, you can get a really good cutter from this angle. Straight over top, you can get a really nasty cutter from this angle because if you're really high over the top and you're, um, if you're throwing it right, right over the top and you're cutting it just at the last second, you're coming straight down the ball, and the ball's going to get a really good, true, natural cut to it. If you're a little three-quarters, it's going to be a little tougher, but most people are three-quarters. Um, but you're just going to have to, again, stay on top of the ball, throw it just like a four-seamer, let that ball, let that grip do the work. Um, aim. You want to aim wherever you want the ball to end up. Try to aim over about three or four inches, maybe six inches. Um, if you're getting a little bit extra movement on the ball. So uh, you really don't want to aim, if, obviously find out for yourself, but you don't want to necessarily aim where you want to throw the ball because if you're aiming there, a lot of times if you're aiming here, the ball will end up here. So aim here, aim at my arm, so the ball ends up there. So focus on this spot, throw it right through this spot and the ball is going to come right back to where you want it to actually be. 
So if you're focusing on an up and in to a left-handed hitter, focus on the catcher's mask because he's going to be more center body. Even though he wants the ball here, if you're focused here, that ball is going to cut to this spot, cut right on their hands. So always try to focus on this pitch maybe six inches over from where you actually want the pitch to be. Obviously, find out for yourself. Maybe, maybe you can focus where you want to throw the ball and the ball goes there. But with a lot of cutters, a lot of balls that have movement, they don't want, you don't really want to focus on where the, ball you want the, where you want the ball to end up. You, you focus on where you want the ball to start because then that's the true straight plane and then it ends where you actually want the ball to be. Um, now, if it goes wrong, the pitch isn't working, what's happening? Uh, a couple things, one, the ball's staying straight. The ball is backing up. That's a really true, that happens a lot. So instead of the ball going this way, it's actually kind of going that way. That happens a ton. Uh, Zach Britton, how, that's how he became, that's how he starts throwing a slider, or it's just his sinker, because the ball was backing up so much that it actually became a whole nother pitch and it was actually really hard. It was 95 miles an hour. Um, uh, another true, another problem the cutter actually has, probably the biggest problem, is that it becomes too much. And you actually start throwing a slider instead of the cutter. It's a big movement. There's a little hump in it. Um, how to fix these problems? If one, if the ball's too straight, uh, try to offset the ball a little bit more. Try to throw the a little bit, turn your hand just a little bit instead of right behind the ball. Throw a little off the ball. Try to get this like we talked about a 12:30 to 6:30 movement or a one to seven. Um, Stay over the ball a little bit longer, maybe you're behind it a little too much, and, and try that. That's the first thing. That'll also help fix if it's moving, if it's backing up on you. If, the, if you're throwing the ball, instead of going like this, it's, it's kind of coming out this way. Um, you got to stay behind the ball more. If that generally means is that the last second, you're kind of cutting this way, and the ball, instead of going here, where you're staying on top of it, and you're staying kind of pushing it that way, where you're forcing it to go that way, you're, you're getting there and the ball is actually spinning this way instead of on top and kind of the last second little extra spin that way. So try to stay on top of the ball a little bit more, stay through the ball a little bit more, stop. You might begin on the side of it a little too much. Same kind of problem if the slider, be, if, if the cutter becomes a slider. Um, a lot of times what happens is they're just a little bit too much on the side of it, but you still are pulling down. So when it back up, backs up, it goes underneath the ball, when you actually get too much of a movement, you're on the side, but then you're actually finished and you're still on top of it, but you're become, it's becoming so big, it becomes now becomes a, a, a true slider where I'm throwing it and I'm getting good, big action. This pitch, you want tight action. Stay on top of the ball, stay a little, t a little if, you're, if you're getting too much movement, come more on top of the ball. Where you, again, where you set the ball, offset it just a little bit, stay true through the ball a little bit, a little bit longer, and then you're going to get the right action. Um, so again, how to grip it? Get your four seam grip. Even you can even go off your two seam grip. Offset the ball just a little bit. Four seam grip. Offset the ball a little bit, and that, and then trust, trust the offset, and trust where the weight is on the ball and your fingers. And if you stay through the ball, that ball is going to cut. Um, or, and then, and if that's not quite good enough, then you can think uh, 1230 to, to 630, 1 to 7, where you actually start forcing the ball to cut a little bit. So, right there, that's your cutter. This pitch, this is the cutter. Um, that's the cutter grip right there. I'll show you the pitch in, in real time. Um, and then let's slow it down a little bit here. So again, especially with this pitch, and again, like every other pitch, I'm going to say this a lot, stay on top of the ball. So right there, I'm on, right on top of the ball. You see, and it's kind of cool with the, with the cutter. See how my fingers right there are both on the ball. And you see the one finger now coming off. That finger's still on it right there. My pointing, my pointing finger is still on the ball. And that's what gives it the late little movement, the extra spin, as opposed to a fastball where you're right behind it and both fingers are on the ball until the last second. Um, that, so right there, it's going to give it a little extra spin. You see the ball completely flat, just like a four-seamer, and moving a little, just a little bit to the left, especially here, you see it move down a little bit, a little to the left. Um, so you're going to get a little bit of... 
this action, sorry. So if the ball is going straight right there at the last second, you're going to get that little bit of action right there. Or in my case, there's a little bit of down action. The weight extra spin right the last second. That's what you're looking for out of the cutter. That's why you got to talk to the catcher and talk to hitters and see what they see and not necessarily what you see. So from the catcher's perspective, this ball might actually be moving really well in on in, in on their hands. Um, from your perspective, though, you might not see a whole lot of movement. So again, go to full speed. And that's a cutter.